Okay, in this video I'm going to demo how to solve a pretty complicated equation using the TI Inspire non-cast calculator and we're going to use a graph to solve. So this is when numerical solve is not going to work because you're not sure if there are multiple solutions and it's not a polynomial so we can't use the polynomial tool. So it's going to be some complicated equation uh, where you don't have an analytic or an algebraic way to do it on paper. It might have an exponential part and a radical part or like a log component and uh, exponential component. So there isn't going to be a way for you to get the x by itself uh, without the calculator. So if it's a calculator part of the exam and you have that as a tool, I recommend using a graph to solve the equation. Um, and here's an example of what I mean. So let's say we have an equation like this one. Sorry, it's fuzzy. Um, it's pretty complicated. There may be an analytic way to solve it, but if I have the calculator, I might as well show you how to do this on the calculator and then you can sketch a graph as part of your solution. So the equation has a, a component on the left, uh, which has x in the numerator of a fraction, and then on the other side of the equal sign, we have x in the power uh, of e. So I'm just going to leave the equation exactly as it is and graph each side of the equation as its own function, and then look for where those two functions are equal or intersect. Another option would be to put everything on the left side of this equation and look for where it crosses zero. Um, but I am perfectly fine leaving it like this and looking where, for where they intersect. So 3 minus x over 3 is our first function. So I'm going to add a calculator page to a new document. No, sorry, add a graph page to a new document and type in the left side of our equation, which was 3 minus x over 3. And when I hit enter, it's going to create that function. I'm going to go back to the menu and graph entry a new function where here I'll type in the right side of the equation and the right side of the equation was e to the x minus 2 power. So e, that's over here, to the x minus 2 power. And when I hit enter it's graphed that as well. So what I can see from this graph is that it looks like there's only one solution to where these two functions are equal um, because I can only see one intersection point and I can tell that these functions are continuing in their trends. If you're not sure, you might want to zoom out and make sure that the functions don't turn and cross again somewhere else because there could be more than one solution. So I can see that there's only one solution, so I'm going to go find that intersection point by going to the menu, analyze graph, and looking for the intersection. It's going to ask me lower bound and upper bound, so I'm going to drag the mouse so I can click somewhere to the left of the point that I'm trying to find, that's the lower boundary and drag it across the intersection point I'm trying to find to the right side. That'll click again for my upper boundary. And then it has the solution 2.74 comma 2.09. That is an ordered pair. It means that they cross when the x value is 2.74. I don't really care about the y value for this sort of solution. I only care about that x value. And that's three significant figures, so I, that is usually sufficient. So 2.74 would be the solution here. But again, zoom out to make sure that there, there's only one solution um, and make sure that you go through that menu, analyze graph, intersection point for each solution if there are multiple solutions because they would all be valid values of x and you can ignore this value of y for the sake of solving the equation. And that is it.